Here we go. Woo! Hear the train of coming, rolling around the bend. And I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. I'm stuck in Folsom Prison. Time keeps dragging on. Rock stars, Eric Andreas, your guitar sage here. How is everybody doing? Um, friends, we're doing a live broadcast on Wednesday. What? Yeah, we are. Today we're going to be doing a live broadcast. Tomorrow we're going to be doing a live broadcast. And with the exception of possibly next week and other occasions that happen every now and then, we are going to really assert ourselves to be doing two live broadcasts per week week okay so we're going to start with this week and today friends we're talking about the three steps to playing your favorite campfire songs uh, so basically what we're going to be doing in this broadcast is i'm going this is a, give you the basic format for it. what we're going to be doing is i'm going to be teaching you three basic steps i've, I've basically brought this down summed this down to three steps that I'm going to be able to show you today. There's a PDF for this. So if you're watching on Facebook, if you're watching on YouTube, you're going to see a link that's underneath the video, next to the video, something like that. And it's going to say something about a PDF, something about your guitar stage. Just click on that and then you'll be able to instantly see this PDF. There's no sign up or anything like that. I just want you guys to have this PDF and, and get rocking with what we're going to be doing today. And the matter or the, the subject matter that I'm going to be talking about today is included in that PDF. Now, uh, that PDF is very extensive, so I want you to download that. Take it to your computer, okay? Have, have, have some fun with it. I'm going to be teaching from that today, but that PDF, PDF is going to drill down even further, okay? So, uh, if you're watching on Facebook, if you're watching on YouTube, hello, welcome. I'm going to be bopping back and forth between Facebook and YouTube, answering your questions. And some lucky winner today who shares this video, listen to this, my friends. We've never done this on a weekly broadcast. You know us. We like to do new things all the time, so we're doing something new. And dare I say it, I think what we're going to be doing is giving away a lifetime membership to the Unstoppable Guitar System on all these live broadcasts from here on out. What? But Eric, those are $400. I know, it's crazy. I'm crazy. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit, you know, off kilter. So that's okay. It, it works perfectly. So today, one of you are going to be winning a $400 lifetime membership to not only the unstoppable guitar system but my new product 365 guitar plan if you want to know more about that or if you want to just check it out you can go to yourguitarsage.com 365 and you can check that out okay all right um otherwise this is how we're going to be doing it i'm going to be teaching the lesson for a bit i'll tell you when the lesson's done you can answer ask questions right now that's fine but i won't be looking at them right now okay um, I've got Instagram going, we've got Facebook going, we've got YouTube going, and, and all the rest, okay? It's a little bit crazy, but uh, for folks on Instagram, hello, and head on over to Facebook and YouTube if you want your questions answered. Otherwise, you can see at this fun angle that you're looking at right now, okay? Uh, and so we'll be, I'll be teaching the lesson, then we're going to be getting into a QA, and a and then for folks that have shared this, this is how we do it. Usually we give away books or ebook uh, bundles, that sort of thing. We're going to start giving away lifetime memberships to the Unstoppable Guitar System. Whoa, because we used to do thousands of dollars. We used to give away thousands of dollars every month. Now we're going to be giving away thousands of dollars every week. What? That's right. We got to up it. We got to make it more fun. So this is how we're going to do it. All right. You guys ready to do this? Okay. So by now, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook, you will have downloaded that PDF, Three Steps to Playing Your Favorite Campfire Songs. 
Uh, and we're going to go over this. Now, I won't be reading this because I just, um, it's for you to read on your own time. But I'm going to be talking about the bits and pieces here. Okay. Uh, there's three basic elements to what it is that we're going to be talking about today, camp, playing your favorite campfire songs. What I mean by campfire songs is a lot of folks, what they want to do is they want to be able to take an acoustic guitar and they want to be able to go to a party, be hanging out at a party, see a guitar, pick up the guitar, and be the life of the party, right? Everybody wants that. Or at a campfire, or at a family reunion, or at Christmas, or whatever. Uh, you want to be able to pick up the guitar, strum a few little notes, and everybody knows what's coming up. It's my song! I love this song, right? We can do that. And so that's what we're going to be doing today, is we're going to be talking about just the simple stuff. I say just the simple stuff, but if you're a newbie, you're going to be cursing me because some of this stuff is a little bit, is a little, you know, you've got to learn it at some point, okay? It's a, it's a new language, I should say. So it's going, there's going to be things that are going to frustrate you a bit. But my job is to keep you out of that frustration zone, get you focused on where it is that you need to go and working on these different bits and pieces, okay? So even if you've played guitar for a bit, I guarantee you you're gonna be learning something today. And we're gonna be breaking it down to three basic components, okay? And before I, before I go into that, the way that I like to think is simply, why make things difficult if you don't have to? So, I am a big fan of Pareto's principle or Pareto's rule, which says basically that it takes 20% of the assets or 20% of knowing a particular something to take care of 80% of the job. Same thing is true with guitar. That's why I give my, my free course away because I think so many people can benefit from that and, and it helps them, uh, moves them along, teaches them more than most guitar players know. So following Pareto's rule today regarding these campfire tunes, I'm gonna show you nine chords that if you know those nine chords, you're gonna literally be able to play millions of songs. I'm not exaggerating. If you understand how to use your capo, which I don't have one sitting here right now. Oh yeah, I do, sure I do. <clears throat> using your capo and using those nine essential chords, moving them up and down the neck, you can literally play millions of songs. Country, rock, blues, all, okay? So that's one thing I'm gonna be showing, showing you. The next thing I'm gonna be showing you is, in no particular order, strumming. How to strum. I know how to strum, Eric, you just hit the strings. Yeah, I know, we know that. But what I'm saying is strumming in timing, strumming in time, because most people, when they strum, they, they know that they're instinctively doing it wrong because there's some very easy traps to fall into. I'll be talking about those traps today. We're going to be undoing those, and then we're going to be after that. The third part of this is learning how to transition from chord to chord. So most people, they can play a chord and they can even strum, but then when they're putting the strumming and the chords together, and now they're switching from one chord to the next, oh man, here comes the deck of cards coming down, right? We don't want that and there is a way to get around that. And guess what? It's not you, it's the guitar, okay? Every guitar player since the beginning of time has gone through this. So if you think you have fat fingers, or if you think you have small hands, or if you think there's something wrong with you because something happened when you were a child and you crushed your hand, or this, that, and the other thing, I promise you that none of those things apply, okay? Because I've seen people play without arms. That's right, I've seen them play the guitar with just their feet. So, no excuses, right? You got an excuse better than having no arms? I didn't think so. So, here we go. We're going to learn this, and it's going to be fun. And what I want you guys to do right now is I want you to pull out that PDF uh, that I'm giving you that's in the description of this video. Get that out right now. Unless you know all this stuff. If you're inside my program, if you're inside the free program or Unstoppable or what have you, then great. Otherwise, you're going to want to, you're going to, want to get that PDF out. Now, there's a whole section on how to read chord stamps. I'm not going to go into that right now because I'm going to show you basically a bite size or, or in a nutshell what that chapter is saying. And then we're going to get straight into the chords, okay? So, basically, when you're reading chord stamps, there's going to be something that looks like this, which is where you're going to be placing your fingers. It's, it's, it's the first position part of the guitar. You're going to see dots. In some cases, like when I'm teaching, I actually have dots with numbers in it, which tells you which 
fingers are going to be more, most efficient in playing these chords. If you have a different way of playing the chord, that's okay. It's not the end of the world. Um, in fact, it may be, may be a great way. May, may have a good reason for doing it that way. But nonetheless, I'm giving you suggestions, and it's like what 99% of the pros do. Uh, and there's reasons for it. You can learn about them later on, or you can just do it, and then later on, you can find out, right? There's no, no reason to get into all that mumbo jumbo right now. It's what works, okay? So basically, you're going to see that section of the neck. You're going to see dots. They're going to have numbers on them, and they're going to be on certain parts of the neck, okay? In my chord stamps, I, I actually have a thick string and a thin string, so you know exactly where to go, okay? So the first part of this, though, is going to be knowing these nine essential chords. We're going to, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over them very quickly and we're not going to drill down. If you don't know how to play your chords yet, that is okay. But this lesson today is not going to be about that. I've got a course for you, a free course for you that's really going to help drill down because we have to keep a good pace here. We've got a lot of folks with a lot of different, uh, you know, variables approaches and that sort of thing, different ranges of how good they are. So we need to keep things moving at a nice pace, okay? So here are the chords that we're going to be talking about. Uh, e minor, E, A minor, C, D, D minor, A, B7, G, and well, that's it. That's nine chords. And so what I've found is that over the years that if you know those nine chords, you literally can play a slew of tunes. In fact, just now I played um, Folsom Prison Blues, and with the exception of the E7 that's in there, we can play the whole tune. And we don't really necessarily need the E7, it's just a little extra fun, okay? All right, so now here's the deal. If you're brand new to chords, there's three things that I wanna tell you very quickly on playing these chords. Number one, or not, maybe more than three things. You want to play on your fingertips. This part is not your fingertip. What I always tell my students and when they come to see me here is I take a Sharpie pen and I literally take that right there and I, and I put little dots right on their fingers, right on the fingertip because, my friends, it's going to look something like that because this part is not the fingertip. That's the finger pad Kiss of death if you want your chords to sound, actually it's really, really good if you want your chords to sound like crap, okay? So don't do that. You want them to sound good, so you want to play on your fingertips, okay? So that's what we're going to be doing, is playing directly on your fingertips. The other thing you want to do, the most important thing you want to do, is you want to curl this last knuckle. Listen to me. If you have any problems with your chords, if you do in this order, fingertips, curling that last knuckle, and playing close to the fret. If you do those three things, it's going to fix 99% of the issues you're having with chords. You're going to have to be cognizant of them at first. Then once you do that, it will become automatic. Whatever you, whatever you put into your conscious mind, whatever you learn consciously, will go into your subconscious eventually. Okay? That's with anything, good or bad. So put good stuff into your head. Okay? So, we're not going to drill down with all these chords other than I'm going to show you these basic chords and you have them here because you have the PDF from the link that's in the description of the video. The chords are this, E minor. So you can see that first one that's just two and three. You see that zero that's open? That's just saying that that's the root of the chord. That's all that's saying. Okay. There's your E minor. Here's your E. I'm putting down a first finger. Very easy. It's one little tweak. The A minor, we take the whole enchilada and move it down one. To play the C chord, we just take this one finger and move it here. You don't have to be getting all this right now. I just want you to just basically observe what I'm doing. There's a D chord, which is a whole new movement. A D minor. And use the fingering that I've shown you here inside of these chord stamps, okay? The A major, or just A. A B7. A lot of people have problems with B7s. Here's the deal. Think about it like a G chord. It's a G chord, but basically what you're gonna do is these two fingers are dropping down one string, boom. This third finger is going up one string, boom, and then you're going back one fret, boom. That's a B7 chord. So it feels very much like a G chord, which is our next chord, a G. Okay, now, if you know those nine chords, I promise you, the way I like to teach is, 
learn this stuff first. Why would I show you a bunch of jazz modes, a bunch of scales, a bunch of things that you're not gonna use for a long time? People think, oh, if I know that, I'm gonna be this great player. Bull crap. Know the basics. I don't know of anything in the entire world that if you don't know the basics really well first, that that's gonna get the job done. I don't know of anything like that, okay? So, really important to know the basics of any particular thing. When it comes to guitar, it's no different. Know the basics, know them really well. I'd rather you know the basics really, 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 really well than for you to know them okay and then be getting into a bunch of intermediate advanced stuff. Don't let those words intermediate and advanced throw you off. Because if you don't know your basics, you don't know anything, okay? Very important to know these nine chords. So that's why I give you these nine chords because they're used like in everything, okay? Now, the next thing we're going to be talking about is we're going to be talking about strumming. Again, I'm not reading this because today I've given you this PDF. What I want to do is I want to get you there as quickly as possible, uh, and you're going to go over this afterwards because it's not all going to happen now. It's not all going to happen today. It's not all going to happen this week. It's a progression, okay? It happens in bite-sized pieces if it's slow and steady and if you're one of those people that aren't a quitter. Now, if you're a quitter... Guitar's probably not for you, and I'll tell you that straight up. But if you're not a quitter, if you're somebody who keeps going, then guitar is a blast. If you take it step by step and you do it in a progressive order of you're learning from a progression, okay, then you're going to be fine, I promise. Now, next bit is strumming. And there are some basic principles. Listen, the stuff that I'm telling you is the important stuff, okay? When we're strumming, we are striking the strings down. We're striking the strings coming up. When we're counting, we're tapping like this. Four, one, two, three, four. When our foot hits the ground like that, naturally when we tap, that's called a downbeat, okay? Very important. The upbeat is the antithesis of that. It's the opposite, right? It's going up. So one, and two, and three, and three, and. My foot has to come up, then it goes down, right? So that's the upbeat. When we strum, we strum down, and we strum up. 99% of the time, we want the down strum to be in tandem with the down beat, and we want the up strum to be in tandem with the up beat, okay? That's how you're gonna know if you're on or not. The other thing is, is you're gonna take these exercises very, very slowly. So we're gonna do the first one. Basically, what you're gonna do, you don't have to do this right now, you can literally just watch me is you're gonna take your fretting hand, you're gonna lay it on the strings as light as a feather. I like to think about it like a sponge. Literally like you're just laying a sponge on there and it's just muting the strings. You don't wanna hear this. You're not pressing, you're literally just laying it on there as lightly as possible while muting all the strings. We're doing that because we want all of our CPU power to go directly towards our strumming hand. We don't want it to be worried about chords. That's why you're having issues most likely is because you're doing too many things at once. So it's kind of like you're, if you're juggling, right, and you're juggling six balls, you can't do that. You need to go down to five. If you can't do five, four, three, two, find out what works for you, juggle that, get good at that. Then you can start upping it. But most people, they think guitar is something different and they can just do it because it's just fingers and it's super easy. It's not. Trust me, I'm going to get you there if you listen to me. All right, so strumming-wise, we're going to go, we're, I'm counting this beat. These are down beats, right? My foot's hitting the ground. Two, three, four. My strum would be like this. Three, four. One, two, three, four. And if you look on the, uh, let's see here, of this PDF, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, the seventh page. You're going to see a bunch of numbers that says level one. Level two, level three, level four. Those are our strumming exercises. So after this broadcast, after the questions, and you get home and you look at this PDF and you read over the strumming part, you're going to start at level one, then level two, three, four. I can tell you right off the bat that level one and two will not be difficult for you, but the first one in level three is going to be kind of the, the um, coming to age, if you will, where we're going to be doing something a little bit differently. We're going to do it today, and I'm going to show you how to get over that, the hump there, okay? So you can see the first one here just says one, two, three, four. This is the PDF, right? Uh, level one, first one there is one, two, 
three, four. That's what it says. So I'm only striking the strings on the down strum. Very easy. This is like the easiest strum to do. So two, three, four. That's our downbeat. And I'm strumming one, two, three, four. That's literally what you do. Also, when you're doing this, if you're brand new, you want to make sure that you can loop it. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We're not taking a vacation even for a second after four. We're not going one, two, three, four. Oh my God, that was hard. <sighs> we're not doing that, okay? We're just, we're gonna keep going. One, two, three, four, okay? Cool, and you're gonna think about that with all these. Slow it down to such a pace that you can do these in a nice, even loop. Okay, the next one is one and two and three and four and. Well, our foot's going one and two and three and four and. So we want our strumming hand to go one and two and three and four and. You just did this in the last exercise. You just decided not to hit the strings on the ands because it's kind of a natural thing that we can do. So we, we go one, two, three, four, but our hand is still coming up every time. So one and two and three and four and. I just have to hit the strings. One and two and three and four. And easy enough, right? Now, I can promise you that if you're new to this strumming, levels one and two are going to be relatively easy, okay? They're gonna be relatively easy. What I mean by that is relative because you've, you've, if you're just doing this for the first time, it's a little bit difficult. Now, where it gets really interesting is when we leave out a beat. And actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to one of these here. The very first one, we leave out the ands of all the beats, one and two and three and four, and we're just playing one, two, three, four, no ands. But let's take that third one for a minute where we leave the and out of the four. This is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna go, what I like to do first is I like to count, two, three, four, and then say it out loud, because if you can't, if it's not in here, it's not going to magically, your hand's not gonna, doesn't have its own brain, right? It's operating on this brain. So if this brain doesn't understand it, your hand's never going to do it. That is absolute gold, my friends. For those of you that, that you get it, great. For those of you that don't, write that one down because it's really, really important. A lot of people, they try to make their hands do something. It's never gonna happen that way. Your hand is controlled by your brain. And once your brain understands the math of something, then your hand can do that, but not the other way around. So this third one down, you have the and of fours missing. And it's gonna go, so, I, so I'm gonna count, I've got my, click happening in here, I'm gonna go one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four, okay? We're not going one and two and three and four. One and two, just because there's a hole missing or just because there's a hole there, we don't, we don't stick something there, right? We just leave it open so that it comes back around again to the one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and. Very important that you understand this here first, okay? Then strumming wise, it's gonna be a lot easier. We can go one and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. Make sense? You can even do it in the air to practice. One and two and three and four. But for those that are just starting off on strumming, I promise you, it's a little bit frustrating, but if you do this, especially the way that I'm teaching it in my course, in my free course, all those places, my gosh, I'm gonna walk you through it, okay? So this is where it gets a little bit interesting, is level three, and, and then we're gonna move on to the third step here, and then we're gonna get straight into the questions, okay? So here we go. So this first one on level three, and by the way, Instagram, I love you guys. Thank you for being there. We're on Facebook and YouTube, and that's where I'm gonna be answering the questions. So if you're leaving questions right now, I appreciate it. Um, but the only way I can look at it be, is through Instagram or, or, or through Facebook and YouTube. So please join us there if you want your questions answered. Otherwise, I appreciate you. Okay, here we go. Uh, so level three, we're missing that downbeat on four, and it's gonna go like this. One and two and three and and. Now what we're doing is we're doing a ghost strum, right? We're, we're still moving our hand, but we're not actually hitting the strings. Why, Eric, are we moving our hand? It doesn't feel natural to me. I know it doesn't feel natural to you. We have to undo this, okay? What's natural to folks is they go one and two and three and and. But what's wrong with that? All the ands should be up and all the numbers should be down. 
So we go one and two and three and and now our one coming back around is going to be an upbeat and that's not right. Now we're all cattywampi. We don't want to be that, okay? So what we want to do is we want to move our hand for every ghost strum as if we're hitting the string. So it would be like one and two and three and four and. Now, for some folks, they have a problem with this because there's no reason for them to put their hand down, okay? If it's an up strum, they don't have a problem with it for some reason. And I know this because I've taught like thousands, I've taught this lesson thousands of times over the years. This is why I know it, and it happened every single, almost every single time to every student, okay? When we come up to this first one on level three, it's what happens. And I see it all the time in my comments inside 365, inside Unstoppable. I see people say it all the time, okay? So... What we want to do is, a little trick you can do is on four, you can hit your knee, hit the bottom of your guitar, do something so you have a reason to do that. And then eventually you'll wean yourself from that and you'll be able to do it. So like this, one and two and three and, and one and two and three and, and. Or you can hit the guitar, one and two and three and, and. And you want to do it slow. and four and now this is tedious at first but I promise you if you do it you'll get it and guess what it's the only way to get there it's not just gonna happen by watching TV and watching other guitar players you have to get involved you got to get your hands moving you've got to use logic you got to use step-by-step -step methods if you don't you can watch guitar players all day long it ain't gonna happen I promise you I can promise you that I've never known anybody in my entire life to learn guitar that way Okay, so that's what we have in regards to the PDF. There's one other thing that I'm going to show you, a methodology, a way of thinking. Man, guitar players, guitar playing is 90% psychology anyhow and about 10% mechanics. Literally, if you, if you have the right psychology, everything else falls into place. If you have the wrong psychology, you can have all the mechanics in the world. You can have every lesson that's been ever done by all the pros. It's not going to help you unless you get your psychology right. What I mean by that is understanding things like it's not about talent, it's about practice. Talent is what we call people who practice. And the people that say that that's bull crap are people that are never going to get where they want to get because they keep thinking that talent is something that's given to somebody and it's not. It's something that's practiced. And then you could call somebody talented, but bottom line, you, they're just practiced, okay? So there's psychology. And if you don't have that psych psychology right, you're going to have issues, okay? All right, so I'm going to show you one other thing, and uh, this is chord transitioning. For folks that have just joined us, we got Instagram, we got Facebook, we got YouTube, I'm going to be answering questions on both. We're also doing something brand new today, my friends, where we're literally giving away a lifetime membership to the Unstoppable Guitar System, okay? It's a $400 value all the live long day. We've been selling that since 2012. Uh, it's a $400 program. For anybody who shares this today, or, or I say for anybody who shares it, everybody, share it. We're going to be picking one winner out of those folks that share it. You can share it on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram, uh, wherever. We're going to be looking afterwards. We're going to be uh, on, yeah, wherever, Twitter. We're going to be looking on social after this. We're going to, be look, we're going to pick a winner, okay? Literally, they're going to win a lifetime membership to the Unstoppable Guitar System and 365, my brand new product. Uh, if you want to know more about that, go to yourguitarsage.com slash one. And you can literally try this whole enchilada out for 30 days for a dollar. Okay, uh, nearly a thousand videos. All right, so without further ado, let's get into this. And uh, what I'm going to be teaching you now is transitioning. Again, psychology, okay, because this isn't something I just show you and then you get it, but you understand the path to get there and then what it takes to get there, the things you have to do to get there. And then you're self sufficient. You don't need me anymore, okay? Okay, so what happens is, is folks are strumming, they know their chords, they're rocking along, singing a song. And then, uh oh, I gotta shift chords. I gotta go from one chord to the ne to the next, and that can be an issue. Almost always, it's an issue because why? Well, because our fingers finally are sitting in some place that it's comfortable. Now we only have to worry about the strumming. So instead of our brain having to multitask, okay, 
it's got your cord. You thought about the cord. Now you're grabbing the cord. As long as you squeeze, you got the cord there. Now you're just having to think about the strumming. So now you're able to shift gears to just this. That's why that feels so good. But what happens is when you go to shift uh, to a chord or transition to a new chord, now you're taking attention away from this. Do it. I promise you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. It's like behind the scenes of your brain. You're going to be doing this. You're going to mess up because you're concentrating on what's the next chord? How am I going to get there? What fingers need to go where? And everything else. And then this guy just does the wrong thing. It goes. <laughs> it just plays the wrong strumming rhythm, okay? It just does the wrong thing. So what we have to do is this. Psychology again, we're talking about it. Is We have to drill down a few of these modules, uh, chords, strumming, then transitioning. What we're doing is we're ingraining chords into our brain without the strumming, okay? People say, well, you got to strum. Slow down, my friend. We're going to get to strumming, but you got to do it separately. If you had a unicyclist juggler, he's not going to try to do both of those at the same time. He's going to learn to drive, ride the unicycle separately from when he's doing his juggling. Same with the juggling. He's going to do it separately, and then eventually he'll try to pull them together, but it's going to be a mess at first. But you got to do them separately because one of those things needs to be in your subconscious, and the other thing can be in your conscious brain. But you can't think of two things at once in your conscious brain. You can't do it, okay? So if you are playing your chords, and you're playing and you're strumming, and you're not, you're not good at both of them, that's conscious brain on both of those, and you're going to suck at it. So what happens is you take one of those things, strumming, get really good at it, drill it into your conscious brain to where it starts going into your subconscious. Then when you start changing chords, your conscious brain can think about, okay, here's the next chord, here's what I need to do, preparing for it, okay, moving now, here we go. And then this guy's on autopilot or vice versa. Okay, So here's how it's going to go. And I have a great lesson for this inside the free course. Here's the deal. You can do the free course. It's yourguitarsage.com slash 30. It's the top 30 lessons I teach all my students. Literally, you don't have to pay anything. Or you can get like a 1,000 lessons and 600 jam tracks and everything else for a buck. Um, you can find both of those at yourguitarsage.com slash 30 if you keep drilling down. Otherwise, if you want the one for a dollar, it's yourguitarsage.com slash one. Okay. Um, the reason that I tell you that is I have an exercise in there where I teach you how to play Amazing Grace with a much longer method than what we're doing now, and I walk you through it step by step. It's super, super, super helpful in getting you to play this campfire style guitar, you know, uh, which is basically strumming and playing chords from your favorite songs. Okay, so, and by the way, if you're needing chords, a great place to go is ultimate-guitar.com, ultimate guitar. You can just Google search it. You can find chords for any tune that you're ever looking for. You can find it there, okay? That's why I'm not showing you chords for every song because there's only a few million songs out there times however many chords. We'd be here a while, okay? So I'm going to give you a resource there, but let's talk about these transitions, and then we're going to go to questions, okay? So transitions. I'm big with analogies because if you can understand this, then I can, t I can show you how to understand this thing over here. If you're trying to traverse a, a river, let's say, and there are rocks that go across this river, let's say it's a stream, and some of those, some of those rocks have moss on them. They're a little bit, they have algae, that sort of thing. Some of them are jagged. Some of them are further apart than others. You've got to use some logic, and you got to go, okay, I'm going to jump on that rock, but not that one, not that jaggedy algae rock with a spear sticking out of it. I'm not going to jump on that rock. Jump out of the nice, I'm going to jump on the nice round rock without the algae, right? So you have to, you have to do a little navigating, and this is similar to, to what we're going to be talking about here. When we're on one rock, we don't jump up in the air and then go, hmm, I wonder which rock I'm going to land on. Hmm, that sharp one or that one there, huh? Yeah, let's go with the soft one. You know, you can't do that because you, you're going in whatever direction you're going into. Same thing here. What we have to do with our chords, we have to think ahead of time. So if you're jumping from one rock to the next, you have to think about that next rock, how far you need to jump, where your foot's going to go, where your hand might go, that sort of thing. Remember this rock analogy when you're playing your transitions. It will absolutely save you, okay? Now, we're on a chord. Let's say we're playing a G chord. And we need to play a C chord. We go, okay, hmm, 
okay? Well, what do we need to do for this? Well, for, from the G to the C chord, it's all new fingers, so we're literally having to, everything's new. Sometimes it's not like that, and I'll show you that in the next example. But if we're going from a G chord to a C chord, it's a totally different chord. None of the fingers are the same. So, but there is something that we can do. Two things. Number one, we can think about the chord before we get to the chord. Very, very important. Nothing in the world has ever been created just like this. It has been thought about first. There was thought, and then there was creation. Okay? So... One has to think about what you're doing here. You've got to play something and then think about the next thing, which will then get your brain to figure things out a lot better than if you don't think about it. So you can't play a G chord. Here comes a C chord. Now, what does a C chord look like? Boom. The, the measure is passed already. Too late. So you need to think about this chord. You're on it. You, now you're thinking about the next chord. Where am I going? What fingers are going where? Okay. And you're sizing it up in your mind. You're not moving any fingers yet. That's the magic is you don't move the fingers yet. You do the math and the all what's going to happen behind the scenes so that when you do move your fingers, they move much quicker, okay? This is what people don't see when they're watching their favorite guitar player and they're like, they're magic, their fingers just move. Nope, you're not seeing all the math that's happening in their head at that moment. Lots of stuff going on. You're not seeing that, so it looks like magic, just like an illusionist, okay? So here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold my G chord. Now I'm thinking about the C chord, and I know that I, I start it with the third finger. It goes three, two, one. I like to build my chords from the lowest note to the highest note, because that's the way we strum them. So it gives you a split second more to form the higher notes when the, the low notes need to be first. So I build my chords from the low note up. So I'll go third finger, second finger, first finger. Now I got my C chord. Then I think about my next chord. If it's a whatever chord it is, it doesn't matter. In this case here, we're going to go back to the G. So I'm going to think, okay, it's fingers 2, 1, 3, and 4, the way that I play it. And then I can see where those fingers are going to go. And here I go. Now, even though that doesn't sound like a big deal to you, it is 100% the magic that goes into chord transitioning. 100%. That is the only thing you do, is thinking ahead of time. Okay? <laughs> Otherwise, you're just going to hope that randomly your fingers will fall in the right place. Maybe you could just grab the chord randomly a few thousand times and hope that you're building some sort of neural path, even though you're doing it differently every time. See, well, the way the brain works is if you do something right 10 times in a row, you're building 10 paths over the same grassy plane. What happens? The grass gets padded down. That's how our brains work. But if you do five of them right and five of them wrong, now you got this five that are right path and you got these five other little tributaries. And your brain looks at that and it's not as clear as if you just had one path. Honestly, that's how the brain works. And if you understand that, you will learn to not practice mistakes, practice what's right, practice it nice and slow. I don't care how slow it takes you. Fast, wrong playing doesn't help you makes you a worse player. You've got to undo those, those bad habits, okay? So, again, we're at the C chord. Now I'm thinking about the G chord. Everything's happening in the background. Two, one, three, and four fingers. And then I'm going to go boom, 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 boom. Now later on, you'll be able to do it faster, and, and it will appear as if you're just grabbing the chord all at once. Great. That's what we're going for, okay? Then what you do is you commit to a beat. So now that we, we're doing that transition, now we commit to a beat. So we go like... One, two, three, four, one, two. While I'm counting, I'm thinking about that next chord. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's how it works. Because if not, you're not. You, there's no sort of um, accountability for when you're playing the chord next. There needs to be some sort of accountability, like counting a beat, and then play that chord when it comes time, nice and slow. It doesn't, I don't care how slow you go as long as you com, you're committing to the beat, okay? Then after that, you can shorten the length of time that you're playing the chord if you're, if you're getting better and better. So instead of going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you can do every, every two beats. Two, three, four, one, two, three. And then you can go every beat. 
Now, I, I know you're a while off on that, some of you, but you could slow this down to be somewhere in between a couple of those exercises. Does that make sense? I think it does, my friends. And then you can slowly integrate your strumming, but you have to do things one at a time, okay? I promise you, I have never seen a student not be successful when they listened to a program, a step-by-step -step program, and they applied the steps in a step-by-step -step format. Never seen them mess up. I've only seen people mess up when they didn't have that and they got so frustrated and they say, I'm not, I'm not cut out for this, plus I got fat fingers, I gotta go. Yeah, sure, you're gonna fail. But if it's somebody else who's like, no, I'm not going to, but I'm gonna follow this step-by-step, -step, they get it 100% of the time. There is no negotiating there, it just is true. Okay, uh, I've been doing this for a few years and um, I've never seen that not to be true, okay? All right, good. So that's the, that is three steps to playing your favorite campfire songs. Obviously, I mean, we've spent 40 minutes here and we're gonna be doing questions now, but obviously I could have sp spoken for hours, but why when I have everything for you in a step-by-step -step format, okay? Check that out. The link for that's in the description of the video. It's my free course, yourguitarstage.com slash 30. There's a reason there's only 30 lessons in there. It's because it's just what you need to get this sort of thing done. If you want more advanced stuff, I've got it for you. Otherwise, that's what you want to do. Okay, good stuff, friends. Um, we got 54 folks on YouTube, or on, I'm sorry, on um, Facebook, and we got a bunch of people on YouTube as well. So, yay, love it. Okay, so here we go. Christopher is saying, I hate the F, don't mention it. So that means Christopher has not watched my effing F chord video, okay? He's got to watch it. Um, and then he'll be able to play it, and then he'll be happy, okay? That's how it works. Okay, so here's the deal. I'm going to go over to YouTube first because for whatever reason on Facebook, I'm not seeing uh, questions pop up. I know you guys are writing them, but um, they're just not popping up. So I may end up sending you guys over there. I'm not sure. Hello, Instagram folks that are on there. If you want your questions answered, head over to YouTube because that's where I'm answering these questions right now. And like I said, if Facebook allows me to, I'll, I'll do that too. I'll be answering there, but right now I'm not seeing them pop up. So I apologize. So answering on YouTube starting there. Um, let me have it, my friends. And I will, uh, and I will give it my, my uh, best effort here to get your questions answered, okay? Um, and, oh, here's the other thing, friends. Two things. Number one, we're giving away a lifetime membership to the Unstoppable Guitar System and the 365 Guitar Plan. It's my daily practice routine across seven different subjects uh, for one whole year. Um, it's yours to have for life, but it's, it's a one-year program, so you can do it over and over again. Um, both of those, we're giving both of those away today. Uh, $400 value, actually it's almost a $500 value because we sell that other course for, oh no, it's a $400 value, we, we package them now. Uh, but nonetheless, we're giving one of those away to someone who shares this video. So lots of people will share it, we're gonna pick one winner. So uh, while we're waiting for some questions to come up with question marks, friends, um, please share this. If you don't have a question, then share it, okay? Okay, so I'm um, going to get into some questions, and um, and uh, and here we go. So Mary Beth is saying, what was that resource? The resource that I mentioned, uh, which is basically how to find uh, chord charts for songs, is Ultimate Guitar, Ultimate Dash Guitar. And there's tabs there, there's chords, there's the whole enchilada. So if you're looking for the chords for a particular song, it's a great place to go. Uh, if you want the chords 100% right, then you can watch my videos on YouTube. Otherwise, if you use the two sources together, uh, it's gonna be very helpful, okay? All right, great. Uh, Beth is saying, Eric has been instrumental in my progress. He gives advice and I trust him immensely. I originally signed up with another site and kicked myself. I really want his lifetime program. Oh, thank you, Beth. Um, well, maybe you'll win it today, Beth. That was really kind. Thank you. Okay, you make sure you leave those, those questions uh, as well, okay? If I purchase a monthly UGS and I decide later to get a lifetime membership, is there a discount? Brian, as it is now, we've got so many different options for purchasing that it's getting kind of convoluted, so no. Uh, so the answer is no. And also, you know what that we give a discount, a hundred dollar discount of your purchase in UGS up front because, like 
one should, right? If you're if you're buying more, you get more of a discount. So that's how we do that. I wish we could do it the other way, but it'd be way too hard to keep up with. Uh, so no, we do not do that, Brian. Get in there. But here's the deal. Get in there now. Get your discount. And if within 30 days you don't like it, just say, I don't like it, Eric. I want my money back. We'll give you 100% of your money back, okay? All right. Great, great, great. Make sure you're using those question marks, friends, because there's lots and lots of questions and I wanna make sure that I get to them all, but I'm gonna be jumping over the ones that don't have question marks, okay? Campfire songs that I could recommend. Yeah, I just played one of them. Folsom Prison Blues, uh, American Pie, Free Fallen. Um, gosh, anything by Tom Petty, anything by Johnny Cash. Uh, there's a myriad of tunes. Brown Eyed Girl. You know, honestly, if you guys wanna know some great campfire tunes, my YouTube channel, which I'm sure you're subscribed to. If you're not, you should, because there's like a thousand, over a thousand videos there. Uh, I those That's the style, oftentimes, when I'm with the acoustic guitar, that's the style of song that I teach, because everybody wants to play that. I want to play that. So why wouldn't we do that? So that's where to go if you want, you know, some, some killer campfire guitars. YouTube slash yourguitarsage.com. All right, where to share the video? Volk, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Some guy on the street say, hey, watch this. Anywhere, just share it. Okay, uh, Ben is saying, howdy, Eric, do you have any suggestions for someone wanting to learn classic rock, uh, e.g. Aerosmith or Foghat, who is a beginner? Ben, yes, and I get this question all the time. People say, hey, I want to get good at blank. I want to get good at blues. I want to get good at classic rock. I want to get good at heavy metal. Um, you know, do you have any suggestions? And here's the deal, okay? The, whether you're learning jazz guitar, blues guitar, hard rock, heavy metal, gent, I don't care what style of guitar it is, there's some basics that one needs to know. I mean, a good two years of basics, I'd say, to, to really feel like you've got the basic understanding of the guitar down, okay? A fun two years, too, I should say. So all that being said, Ben, it doesn't matter what, I'm a classic rock guy, so that's exactly the way that I teach. But at the same time, someone could take my courses and go play jazz or blues or classical or anything else. Classical, yes. Um, all the theory is the same, that some of the techniques are a little bit different, but when it comes to rock and it comes to blues and all these, it's all the same. So, you know, I would say my suggestion to you, start on my free course, yourguitarstage.com slash 30. The link for that's in the description of this video. If you, here's the deal, I always tell people, people say, will come to me and they'll say, hey Eric, how do I do blank? And they'll ask, they'll want the big picture. And I say, do these three things first. Because a lot of times people won't do those three things. I want them to because I want them to come back to me and then I can give them all the rest of the information. But if I give everybody everything right away, they don't do it. So um, my uh, challenge for you, Ben, and anybody else is start at those first 30 videos. If you're not willing to do those 30 videos, guitar is not for you. Okay, I can safely say guitar is not for you if you can't invest zero dollars to watch 30 videos at your convenience in the warmth of your home with your guitar, et cetera, et cetera. I can't make it any easier for you. So my challenge to you, Ben, or anybody else is do those first 30 videos. The link for it's in the description of the video. Make it super easy for you. Um, start there. If you don't do that, you're probably not cut out guitar for guitar because you gotta learn and there's, you gotta have things to learn. You gotta have resources to learn, make sense? Um, and then Ben, I would say learn some blues. Uh, which I have a whole blues section inside my courses or learn it from somebody, whether it's me or somebody else, but uh, learn the basics, the open chords, power chords, learn songs by Aerosmith. Uh, whoever your favorite artist is, learn their songs, but you're gonna have to learn the techniques for learning those songs. Does that make sense? Okay, do you have recommendations for practicing strumming patterns when switching between quarter, eighth, and 16 notes in the same song? James is saying. James, I've never run into that so no, I don't have any practices for that. Now, the exercises that I just gave you, my friends, James, that are in the PDF, that are in the description of the video, that PDF has 
quarter note exercises in it, and it's got eighth note exercises. What it doesn't have is 16th note exercises, but here's the deal. I specifically didn't put 16th note exercises in it because there's no difference. Your approach will be 99% the same. Here's why I say 99% the same is. If we have a downbeat, and we have an upbeat, and we have a down strum and an up strum, those are eighth notes. Quarter notes are when we go one, two, three, four, because there's four in a measure, right? Four quarters. Eighth would be eight in a measure. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We count that like one and two and three and four. And, okay, so there's our quarter, there's our eighth notes. If we were doing sixteenths, we'd be going one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and. A. Now the only caveat to this is, is our downbeat is definitely on the up. I mean, it's definitely on the downbeat. The down strum's on the downbeat. But since we've got four in the beat, we're going one E and a. And so we've got one E and when our foot comes up, we're doing a down strum. I don't even like to say that because people go, oh, but you just said. So James, don't even worry about that. What I want you to do is I want you to practice the strumming exercises that I've given you. Just speed them up. Just speed them up to the, to the same speed. You're not going to be doing anything different with this hand. It's just down, up, down, up, down, up. If your hand's always moving, whether you're strumming or not, like this. Um, let's see. Um, What I'm doing is I'm muting and I'm also doing some ghost strums over here, but my hand never changes. It just goes up and down and up and down and up and down. And what happens is if you, once you get that strumming rhythm, it's just like it's clockwork. I'm not even thinking about this strumming hand, okay? So that will get you where you need to go, okay? Do you keep uh, the same strumming pattern but change when you hit the strings? Do you keep the same strumming pattern but change when you hit the strings? Uh, James is saying. No, I do not. So for instance, if I'm playing, um, so this is, this is one of the strumming patterns. I think it's number one on level two. It's the first one on level two of the strumming patterns I just gave you in the PDF in the description of the video. Um, if I'm strumming Folsom Prison Blues, it's one, two, three, and four in. One, two, three, and four. 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 One, Right? Okay? So I'm not changing that when I'm playing here. One, two, three, and four. 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 So it's really, most songs, it's just the same strumming rhythm, just keep going, just like a freight train, right? Yeah. All right, nice. Thank you for the kind words, uh, Melissa. Very kind of you. Very kind. Oh, yeah, uh, Proud Mary is, is a classic. Old man, yeah, Verve, Verve Pipe, love him, love him, love him. Um, yeah. All right. Bob, if you already belong to the, it's the unstoppable guitar system, Bob. If you win that, then you can give it to a friend. You can give it to charity. Um, I give these away to charity all the time. In fact, we've given away close to a half a million dollars worth of, of, of unstoppable guitar system to charities uh, where they raise money. So, Bob, a great thing to do would be to give that to charity or to give that to a friend. That's what I would suggest doing. Any tips on playing G with, with three fingers from pinky to middle? I've been having lots of problems. Uh, Ren, yeah, there, there is no special trick other than following the protocol that I teach inside my program. Now, sometimes, listen to me, friends, sometimes you're going to hear me say this and you're like, Dad, gone it. He keeps pushing us to that program. Listen, I'm not pushing you to the program, but you watch every single time that someone asks a question here, 99% of the time it can be answered in the free course. 
The reason I created the free course is because it's free and you don't have to pay anything and you can do this and I don't have to teach it over and over and over again when other people are wanting to hear other stuff as well. Okay, so um, I'm just saying to take advantage of those things because it's really truly going to give you the answers better than what I would be able to do right now. Okay, um, because I'm answering broad questions here. Okay, but take advantage of that, that course. Uh, a rend, and I will show you exactly how to do that. It has nothing to do, it's not like the G chord with three fingers or four fingers or ten fingers is going to be any different than anything else. It's basic fretting and chord techniques, which I t teach inside the program. Okay. Um, okay, hi. Uh, is the position of the blues scale the same in all keys? For example, A minor blues scale, the blue note is the fourth note. Uh, is it also the fourth note in E minor? Yes, it's all the same in every single one, indeed. All right, good. I'm seeing some questions about songs. Colorful, old man. Yep, those are songs. Um, I'm not sure what the question is, though, there, my friend, so you'll have to let me know what you mean by that. Uh, do I have to fret two strings with my thumb for the Hendrix bar chords? Uh, Galaxy Light, no, and I have a video for this specifically. If you type in your guitar stage Hendrix, you'll probably see what I'm talking about, or thumb. Um, but no, you don't have to. Basically, you're just playing that low E string. <laughs> playing that low E string with a thumb. That's it, okay? Um, okay, Eric. Uh, Rusty is saying, Eric, I am in the, in the Unstoppable Guitar System. I'm doing pretty well. Should I work on each module until I get good at it, or should I progress through all of them and go back and review that which I am poor at? Rusty, great question. So, um, you know, I'm a big, I'm a firm believer of, you know, moving forward. You want to make sure that you understand what you're doing. If you get done spending an hour on a module and you don't understand it at the end of the module, then logic will tell you to go back and do it again because you don't, otherwise you will have wasted an hour. Okay, so definitely go back. Make sure that you do get it. But if you're away from it, you're going to forget a little bit. Of course you are. But then you'll come back to it eventually. Okay, so um, all that to say, make sure you do truly understand a module when you're done with it, or at least have a pretty good idea. You're not going to be an expert at it, right? It's a new idea. It's a new language. But if you take the time afterwards and actually make sure that you have it down, then you're going to be golden, okay? All right, uh, great question. All right. All right, all right, all right. How do I get four uh, finger G fast takes me all day long? Richard, practice it. Seriously, practice whatever, whatever you're having a problem with, practice it, but practice it the right way. How do I practice it the right way, Eric? The clue is, in the link in the description of the video. Seriously, that's that's how you're gonna know exactly how to play a four finger G chord and to do it the right way. The reason it's taking you all day long, Richard, is you haven't done the practice enough to get it. There is no one on the face of the earth who's ever just played a G chord, just like that. It just doesn't happen. So what happens, see this is the psychology, Richard, is somehow you, me, Everybody who's watching right now thinks they'll play something. They'll be like, well, I don't get it. I've done it three times. Do it 300 times. Okay? That's when start, things start happening. Okay? I'm being facetious. Do it more than three times. Do it until you get it. If you've done it three times and your brain doesn't get it, it's, that's, then you've got a normal brain. No one gets it in three times. Okay? Um, it takes more times. And so that's what you want to do. Uh, okay. Ben, can I do a lesson on Fog Hat? I just want to make love to you. Oh, I love that song. Yeah. Um, I'll put it on the long list, my friends. My friend, I get a lot, I get, I get lots of, of questions, uh, requests like that. Uh, okay. Have I have a Yamaha, sounds awesome. Want lower action, I've dropped the saddle, but bridge. Okay, you don't want to mess with any of that, Ken. Bring it to a guitar luthier. Don't do it yourself. You can do it yourself. But you can also, I mean, technically, if you had anesthesia, you could also do surgery on yourself. But I wouldn't do that. I would not advise that. It's not a good idea. Um, I, no, I, w I would not recommend that. Um, so bring it to a luthier. I do, I've been playing and messing with guitars for years, and I don't do my own work on guitars. I changed strings last night, but that's it. 
I do not like to do that. Power chords. What do I mean by power chords? Richard's asking. Uh, I have a video that's longer on this, uh, Richard, but basically power chords are when we just play the first three notes of your basic bar chord. So for instance, if it's like a G um, major chord, we just play the first three notes uh, on the sixth, five, and fourth string. Uh, Richard, if you want to know more about that, either get in the program uh, for a buck or on YouTube, type in your guitar stage power chords and I'll, and I'll, give, you, I'll give you more information, a lot longer lesson about that. Um, thank you so much for the kind words, Volk. I appreciate that, buddy. Uh, Eric, I have a 12 string and a 6. Is it a good idea to bounce between the 12 and 6 and vice versa? Nothing wrong with doing that, Rod. Uh, it's like driving two different cars, so uh, you're not going to be as accurate as driving one car all the time because you've, obviously you have less time on it, but it'll make you more, uh, it'll give you a more, more breadth, right? More uh, ability to do stuff, so. All right. What's the best way to commit songs to memory after you get the techniques down? Brad is saying. Brad, the best way to commit songs to memory after you get the techniques down is to just play them over and over again. Uh, you can do that by just playing the song over and over again, but what I suggest is taking chunks of a song. So just do the chorus over and over and over again. Think about it as modules. Our brain works a lot better when we can take a bite-sized piece digest that, move to another bite-sized piece, digest that, and so on and so forth. Otherwise, you're just playing that song over and over again. It's not going to be as successful as just taking the course and doing that over and over and over again to where you're like, I got it, I got it already. Then doing the verse over and over again, I got it, I got it. Then the bridge, I got it, I got it. And then gluing those three things together. That's the best way to memorize. But it's just repetition. That's the only way to get it in your brain, you know? Um, all right, good, good, good. Any tips for hybrid picking? David's saying. Uh, David, yes, practice it. Uh, I mean, seriously, you know, tips for hybrid picking. Hybrid picking is when we have a pick in our hands, uh, thumb and first finger, and then we're finger picking with fingers, ring, and, uh, or middle and ring. And so, um, you know, So I'm doing some bits here uh, with pick A and the first finger. Um, so what it allows you to do is it allows you to use the pick and finger pick at the same time. But um, David, practice hybrid pick, picking, you know, take some songs, uh, by your favorite artists who, who if you're probably in the country um, music, if that's what you're saying, if you're into hybrid picking, there's not a lot of other genres that are, that are real famous for that. Um, you know, jazz a little bit, like Chet Atkins style, that's considered country. Uh, I would follow a, a legit hybrid picker. I am not a legit hybrid picker. I am, I can get by, barely. Okay, you want someone who's really good at hybrid picking if you really want to go down that route, okay? K-12 is asking about a Yamaha guitar that I have not played. I'm sorry, my friend, I don't know that one. Uh, Matthew's saying, the issue um, I have with counting when strumming is to, hold, to get a hold of a rhythm is I end up messing up chord changes, just like I can't do both at the same time. That's your answer, Matthew. Does this just get better over time? Yeah, Matthew, you nailed it right on the head. You can't do both at the same time. That's why I say you've got to just practice strumming. That's why I taught those things separately here. You have to just practice strumming separately. You have to practice chords separately. Then you bring the two together. Have you ever, when you were a kid and you were first riding your bike, right? Were you like, uh, were you like on the cell phone? You're like. Oh, dude, yeah, I'm just, I'm just learning to ride a bike right now. I don't know what all the hubbub's about. This is so easy. Hey, I'm going to get ready to hit a ramp. Hold on. Woo. Yeah. You're not doing that the first time you're riding a bike, are you? No, the first time you're riding a bike, you're like this. You, you, you're thinking you're going to fall because it's taking every bit of CPU power to get to riding that bike. But what happens is, over time, 
it sinks into your subconscious. And now you get on a bike 20, 30 years later and you don't even forget about it. You just ride a bike. Same thing is true with strumming or anything else, okay? Um, walking, when you were a kid, when you just learned to walk, no one was able to ask you how old you were or what you wanted to eat. You were just concentrating on not busting your melon open, okay? So uh, important, uh, Matthew, that you do them separately, drill them into your conscious brain to where you'll know it because you'll be like, okay, I got it. I got this already. It's getting kind of boring now. Then you're, now you're getting it. Okay. If you think for a minute that Stevie Ray Vaughan didn't play so much that he got bored, you're wrong. He got, he played so much that he was able to just like do that in his sleep. Okay. Uh, yeah, good stuff. And then, so take that stuff separately. And I go, I break that down, Matthew, in, in the course uh, where I'm teaching songs that way as well. So you can actually know exactly what you're doing, you know? Uh, okay. Most Avenged Sevenfold songs are in drop D. How would you tune your guitar to a drop D? Super easy. You just uh, pick the D string and the E string, and you make the E string one octave lower than the D, like this. <laughs> That's drop D. So that's how you would do drop D. And I have uh, lessons on that too, as well. All right. Sorry, I'm, uh, some, of these, uh, some of these messages I'm missing. So, uh, and, and the chat keeps rolling, so I gotta, I gotta grab these. Okay, hand fatigue. Uh, Jim Torres, hand fatigue, question mark. Yes. Uh, what do you mean, hand fatigue? Uh, everybody gets hand fatigue. You're using muscles in your hands, so indeed you're going to get hand fatigue, especially in the beginning. There's lots of hand fatigue because your muscles just aren't ready to do this yet. It's like if you go to the gym and, you're, and, you, and you start lifting a bunch of weights, the next day you're like, well, God, my muscles hurt. Yeah, because you just used them like you never have before, so indeed they're going to hurt. Okay, What to do about it? Keep playing, man. You know, uh, Just keep playing. Is it, is it okay, sir, to teach? If you're trying to play music you hear in your imagination, how do you know what scale to use and which notes to use for starting position? That's a very, very broad question, Tim. Uh, and that you need some basic theory. You gotta start at the basics. Um, I can't teach you multiplication before teaching you addition. So, you know, so you've got to learn some basic theory. I've got all this free stuff for you. You got to start there. So start somewhere. You got to learn. You got to start somewhere. But if you're trying to play music and you hear that you hear in your imagination, how do you know what scale to use and which note to use for starting position? So, humming. If you really want to get down to it, if you did, never wanted to watch a video or learn about the guitar, hum, hum, and then find the note. And you're like, well, how do you do that? then you want to learn about the guitar. And that's, that's when you're getting into lessons. Otherwise, you just hum and you just search for the note until you find it. And I actually have lessons on that, okay? Uh, and there's the, um, yeah, there's the demo, exactly. Uh, can you teach some finger style? Lim, I teach finger style all the time. I won't be teaching it in this video uh, because it's a much longer, I'm getting to, to broad questions here and teaching finger style is, it's gonna take a while. Plus, it's in the free course, yourguitarstage.com slash 30, the one that's in the description of the video. That's where you want to go. Uh, would you recommend a brand new Mexican Strat or a used American Strat? I would say a used American Strat. Although Mexican Strats are really good, I've owned lots of them. Uh, the American, American Strats uh, are made with higher quality woods and, and uh, electronics and stuff like that. And I prefer used equipment anyhow, especially guitars. I love used guitars. I don't really like new guitars. Feels weird to me. I don't know why, but I don't like them. I like when they're worked in a little bit and when they have a story. I love that. If it's owned by somebody else or what have you. 
In bar chords, do I need the last three strings to be muted or all the strings? Uh, and typically for bar chords, you want all the notes. Yes, indeed. Um, I don't know what it is with a 12 string. I'm drawn more to it and, and, can, and can make it talk intelligently. I must not be wrapped too tight upstairs. <laughs> That's all right. Okay. All right, good, good, good questions here, friends. Um, Eric, how long does it take to remember the song completely? How many songs does someone remember before at any one time? Jim, those are those are really broad questions. Uh, depends on how how much information's in the song, how long you've been memory, memorizing songs, how much time you've put into the song. There is, if I gave you a, a, an answer, a time, it would be a lie. So I won't do that. I'm not going to lie to you. There is no way to answer that question. It depends. It's different for everybody. It depends on the song. It depends on what you're trying to learn. Okay, and. Uh, and how many songs you can know? I mean, one can know thousands of songs. I think it's infinite. I mean, our brains are infinite and they grow. So um, it's an infinite number. Um, there is no infinite number. It's infinite, okay? Uh, how many songs does it take to remember? So, for instance, I was in a, a band where we did, we had like, our song list was like 60-something songs. And that was a lot because these songs all had solos in them in real intricate parts. So it wasn't like I was learning 60 campfire tunes. It was like 60 songs with solos and intros and riffs and the whole nine yards, you know? Is it better to practice one song for a long time or work on four or five songs at once? There's not really a direct answer for that. I wish I could. Again, that would be lying to you if I told you there was a direct way, a, a specific way. Me, Personally, I prefer to look at one thing at a time because I find that when I drill down and I can focus on something, instead of being in all bunch of different places at once, when I'm focused on one thing, this is anything with life, meditation, your kids, your wife, your husband, your friend, concentrating on whoever's in front of you, concentrating on this moment in time instead of the past or the future, it all comes down to right now, focus. So my gut would, tell, would say, just do one song. However, if you start getting bored of one song and you know it's going to take you longer to teach, then you might look at some other songs, but keep coming back to that one and make sure, make sure you get it. Okay? Good. Is practicing 20 to 30 minutes a day okay? Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> That's not the answer you wanted, is it? So here's the deal. I always say to folks, they say, how long should I practice? How good do you want to be? That's your answer. If you're fine being mediocre then practice a mediocre amount. If you want to be great, practice a great amount during the day. A lot, okay? There's no way to cheat this. There's just not. I wish I could tell you that there was, and here's the button to press, and here's the course to buy. There's not. It's hard work. That's all it is. Uh, but 20 to 30 minutes is better than 10 minutes, okay? It's not as good as an hour, though. What is the guitar in my hand? This is a Yamaha uh, LL16. This is like a, maybe a... 900 ish dollar acoustic guitar that I won actually a few years ago and it's like doesn't have a nick on it and uh, and I'm actually going to give it away I still have the the pick guard plastic on it but I'm actually going to be giving this guitar away I don't know when but I'm going to be giving it away sometime soon and it's a really nice acoustic guitar Rihan which part of the A minor scale would you recommend to start minimalistic blues Rihan I would suggest, and by the way, what folks, what Rahan's talking about here is minimalistic blues. It's inside of the unstoppable guitar system. This is the one that literally today you can get into for one dollar. You get literally almost a thousand videos, nearly 600 jam tracks, live broadcasts from me. In fact, when's the next one coming up? This Monday. I think it's this Monday we're going to be doing two live broadcasts that won't be on YouTube. You guys won't be able to, to view it unless you're in the program. And they're real special because there's only a few people in there. So everybody gets their questions answered. Um, so all that to say, that's all available for $1 today. And that minimalistic blues thing that Rihan, Rihan is talking about is in there. And it's a whole section where I'm teaching you how to play the blues in a very minimalistic way. And that is the way to play blues. And you will be a ninja at it when you're done. I recommend... 
the top three strings of position two, Rahan, and if you're in the program, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The top two, uh, the top three strings of position two. At what angle should the, t the tip of the pick strike the strings downward and what angle to strum up? You're, you're, um, you're thinking a little too, too micro there, my friend. Just pick, okay? Uh, it, it is at an angle, uh, but it's, I mean, sometimes mine is perfectly flat and then other times it's at a slight angle. I would say 45 degrees is too much of an angle, um, you know, but it, it, it depends on what works for you. That's, a, there's not really a science, there's not anybody that's out there saying, oh, it should be at this angle. If they are, don't listen to that guy because that's crazy, you know. Um... Okay. Uh, Uncle Jeff is saying, if, if you have given away over half a million dollars of courses, why have I never won one? Uncle Jeff, because you're probably not a charity. That would be the, the correct answer. I've given away over half a million dollars of courses, but not to students. Um, I've given them away to charities, to or, you know, like orphanages and stuff like that, folks that are trying to raise money for, for, <clears throat> for charity. But I do give these away, we're, and we're doing these uh, twice a week now. And so, uh, what's that, times four weeks, it's eight. And then we do our big live broadcast, and that's nine. And in fact, we usually give away like five then. So we're giving away literally like one every other day, essentially. Um, by the end of the week, or by the end of the month, we're giving away like 15 away, um, times 400. You can do the math. Uh, but, so we're, so we're, so Uncle Jeff, we're, we're raising it up, so the chances of, of winning one are going up and up and up, okay? Uh, if I'm jamming on an A minor uh, backing track, I use A minor pentatonic. Can I also include a few licks which include notes from the A minor scale and not A minor pentatonic? Yes, Rahan, remember that the A minor pentatonic is a subdivision of the A minor scale. So using the A minor scale, yes, you can do that, and it's going to sound... Uh, well, it depends on what the chord progression is, but it'll probably sound pretty good. Does arranging finger style require scales? It can, but no, not necessarily. It does not. How many tasty licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll, Tootsie Roll lollipop? Uh, for those of you that don't remember, that's a, an ad from the 70s. I remember that one. Well, when you play a G with pinky and ring and middle, do you still play on your fingertips? Yes, indeed. Always fingertips. When you're playing your chords, you almost always want to play on your fingertips unless you're playing a bar chord, okay? Okay, good, good. I find it uh, hard to identify which strumming pattern a particular song is using. Even when I try random patterns, it's difficult to know for sure if I get it right. How to get it right? Christopher. Number one, make sure that you know all the strumming patterns that I'm giving you in the free program, okay? Make sure that you know all of those. Then I've got a, I've got a video in the course, in the $1 course there, uh, that will tell you exactly how to do that. It's longer than what I want to go over right now, but essentially you're listening to the hi-hat, you're listening to the drums, and you're basically emulating the drums. But I drill down to the different levels there, the snare, the kick, the hi-hat, uh, and a lot, of it, a lot of it comes from that, from that basic feel of a song because uh, you're not going to typically have the strumming pattern be different than, too different than what the drums are doing, okay? For instance, um, if I'm playing Folsom Prison Blues, you know? One, two, three, and four, one, two, three, and four, one, two. You know what the drums are playing? They're playing this. It's a it's a, a portion of what I, of what I'm doing there when I'm strumming. It's a portion of that, but it's basically based off of a train beat on the drums. Okay, good. Uh, it's a great question, and and I understand that. I get that a lot. Folks say, um, they say, you know, I really want to learn how to strum from these tunes. How do I do that? And so I totally 100% get that. And folks on Facebook, I apologize to you for whatever reason. I cannot see this. And I'm going to try it one more time in a, in a different way here because I, and I just don't want to leave you guys hanging. So I'm going to try it some other way, and I'm going to pop over to it in a minute. But if you really get frustrated and you really have a question that you want to have answered, please go to YouTube because for whatever reason right now, I just cannot, um, I just cannot see it, okay? 
So, but I'm gonna try to go to it real quick another way here, okay? And I'll let you know in just a minute. I'll come back to it and I'll let you know if, uh, if it works. And hello to Instagram, folks. Uh, I know if you're still there and you're wondering why I'm not answering your questions because we're just on Facebook and uh, YouTube today answering questions. I can't get to all three. It's crazy the way it is. All right, how important is it, um, Mary Beth is saying, how important is it to make sure to hit the tip? Should I slow down and hit it each time or go with the flow? Should I slow down and hit it each time or go with the flow? How important is it to, to, to hit the tip? Okay, Mary Beth, you're going to have to be a little bit more detailed about that because I'm not sure what you mean by that. If you mean like fingertips, um, you're going to have to let me know what you mean by that, okay? I'm not too sure. I seem to hit, oh, my hip seemed to hit my pinky on the pad instead of the tip. Okay, here we go. When I'm playing at times, the pinky is so small and more difficult to hit the tip of the finger when I move faster. Okay, Mary Beth, if you can still play the chord on the pad of your finger, it is the harder way to do it. But if you do it and it works, then just do it. And eventually it's going to happen. Okay, but the more you can slow it down, um, Rod even said that, yeah, take it slow, Mary. Slowing it down is really going to help because... Remember, what we're doing is we're trying to build a neural path. We're saying, hey, brain, do it this way. Every single time, do it this way. But when we speed things up and then we do it wrong one time, then we just told the brain, it's, it's okay if you do it right most of the time, but here you did it wrong. It's, it's okay. And we don't want to do that. We want every single time for it to be right so that it's like clockwork and we can get to it every single time. Okay, that's a great question, Mary Beth. All right. Um, <laughs> minimalistic blues lesson changed my life. Nice. Steve Asaurus, thank you so much for letting me know that, and I'm so glad uh, that, that it helped. Uh, that is, it is, a, it is a really cool lesson plan, um, folks. What, what Steve Asaurus is talking about is minimalistic blues. It's a, it's a sub course under a blues course that I have in the big course, okay? Again, uh, inside the Unstoppable Guitar System, there's, oh, I think there's over 600 videos now as of we're getting ready to upload some new ones. So nearly, uh, somewhere around 600 videos. 600 jam tracks. 365 is adding a whole nother almost 370 videos, okay? 370 lessons. So you've got a lot of videos, like nearly 1,000. Uh, so that minimalistic blues is in that is in that course, and you can try all that out today for one buck. You literally can can try that out for a month, okay, thirty days. Uh, Eric, after all these years, is there anything that still trips you up? What are you working on? That's a great question, Mary Beth. Uh, very great question, Beth. After all these years, is there anything that trips me up? There are so many things that trip me up, Beth. It's just not even funny. It's true. Um, whether it's speed, whether it's accuracy, whether it's um, just kind of a new style that I'm seeing someone play, or really just executing things in, in ways that I see other people executing, indeed. So, in fact, it, it, it's, it's a strange thing to be a, a guitar teacher and to be able to reach so many people and still not be able to do so much. But that's, that's life. And if I was sitting alone in my basement getting all these techniques down, I wouldn't be here with you now because I'm in the basement talking to you now. So it's either I do that and I spend time with my family and I eat right and I work out and I meditate and do all those things and play guitar or I just sit in the basement and I play guitar and I, and I don't go out in the sun and I become weird, um, which I did that for many years. <laughs> so, um, but all that to say, yeah, there's a lot that trips me up. Tons. Great question. Uh, okay, let's say I want to arrange the instrumental part for Love Yourself by Justin Bieber. What is the process I should go through? Lim is saying. Lim, that is such a broad question. Uh, but, in, I mean, I'll tell you, I'll say what you need to do, but it's going to be so broad because you don't have the, the, the basics I can tell by the, quest, the question that you've asked here. Um, but basically what you should do is you should take every voice that you're hearing, whether it's the guitar, the bass, whatever. You should take every voice, the drums, Justin's voice, and then you, you sub that down to chords and melodies. So I know that you're like, what are you talking about? And I know that's because uh, that's like saying, someone says, 
how do I do open heart surgery? And I'm like, well, it's easy. You just you cut the guy near the heart. Uh, you move the the rib cage over, and you start chopping away, and then you're 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 doing heart surgery. Yeah, it's that easy. It's also that hard. So um, so that that's a very broad question, Lim. I wish I could answer that accurately, but realistically, there's a lot that one needs to know. Um, but with that being said. Um, it's either a lot that someone needs to know or someone needs to have so much tenacity that they just stumble across things from through trial and error. You can do it that way too, but that takes a long time. Do I have a faster way to learn chord changes? Isaac, I have the fastest way to learn chord changes. Here it is. You ready? You play the chord change, whatever chord change it is, and then you play it again. And when you're done with the second time, you do it a third time and a fourth time and a fifth time until you have it down. That is the fastest way to learn chord changes. There is no other way to learn chord changes. Uh, I, sometimes when I, when I talk, friends, I don't mean to sound sarcastic, but I've got to drive the point home to you because we don't have all the time in the world. And it really comes down, do not be afraid to pick up that guitar way more than you think you should be picking it up. Okay, it's not gonna bite you. Your pain in your hands, it's not gonna, you're not gonna die. You're gonna be fine, okay? So don't be afraid to play, 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 play because that's really what gets you there. There is nothing else that gets you there. I don't know of any guitar player who's good at what they do who, where they don't spend a lot of time playing guitar. Sorry, I've gotta take a little water break here while I'm, while I'm reading the next messages. So does that make sense, Isaac? I hope so. Ah, okay, Celeste is saying, my guitar pick keeps trying to fly out of my hand even though my fingers aren't sweaty. Any advice on keeping them in check? Celeste, I have a few videos of like this in the free course uh, that you can check out. Otherwise, you wanna get a thinner pick, especially if you're strumming the guitar. If you're hitting more strings or hitting the guitar harder, you want a thinner pick. If you're hitting the strings lighter or less strings, you want a thicker pick. As a rule of thumb, people break this rule all the time and it's not the end of the world, they can still do it. But if you're trying your, to have your pick not fly out of your hands, that's what's going on. Also, you can find picks that have a little bit of grip on them, like this one. This is called a Brain Pick. That's a brand name, Snarling Dogs Brain Picks. Snarling Dogs Brain Picks. That may be in my store. If it's not, it needs to be. We need to put that in our store. Uh, but um, yeah, there you go. And the store, if you want to know about that, is kit.com slash your guitar sage. You can check to see if they're in there. Otherwise, check out Snarling Dog Brain Picks. That's the name of them. All right. Good, good question. I bought my first guitar today, a nylon string. Is it good as a steel string? It's different than a steel string. So it's just as good, and it's, but it's different, okay? It's like saying, I got a Porsche today. Is it as good as a, as a uh, Hummer? Well, depends. If you're gonna take that Porsche on the trail, then I'd say the Hummer is gonna be better. But if you're taking it on a racetrack, the, the, the Porsche is gonna be better. So it really just depends on what you're trying to do. But uh, I love a nylon string. They're, they're really fun to play and they're nice and soft on the fingers, okay? Uh, Audrina is saying, I'm so grateful for the free course. I'm definitely a beginner, but it's gotten me farther than I ever have been, and I understand the pattern of the fretboard, which I never did before. Yay! Thank you so much, Audrina, for letting us know that. And by the way, folks, I have, fo I have, I check messages throughout the day uh, and even into the night a lot of times on my programs, Just constantly interacting with my students. Uh, folks that are in here, they'll tell you that that is true. And, um, and I've had so many folks just within the 30 lessons say, I've learned more in these, and they're not even through the course, they're like on 18 or 20 or, or 15, and they say, I've learned more already in this than five years of playing guitar and learning from my instructor. I get, let, I get comments like that all day long. The reason that I'm saying that is not to pat me on the back, I'm just teaching guitar. These are just methods. I, have a, I do have a method for teaching that I think is, is really powerful, but at the same time, it's my job, so I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm telling you, if you think that these lessons are baby lessons and you don't need them, you're fooling yourself. Do what you know what to do. Get in the free course right now. It's that link that's in the description of the video. What's a good pick thickness for an electric? 
Um, I would say anything that's like about a millimeter and up. Uh, so this right here is 0.6. And this is too thin, in my opinion. So like a medium, I still don't like mediums anymore. Now I'm liking heavier uh, picks for my electric. I, I just change over the years. I uh, used to only use mediums. Now I prefer like a heavy pick uh, when I'm playing electric or maybe even a super heavy. And um, so, but that would be my suggestions, like a medium or up from there. Uh, all right, Uncle Jeff shared on Facebook and Twitter. Nice, Uncle Jeff. Beautiful. I have the chords. I got the melody. How do I combine that together? Lim, watch the video inside the free course where I teach you how to do exactly what you're talking about, taking the chords, taking the strumming, taking the chord progression, and putting it together because that's really what it's about, right? Watch that video on the um, on Amazing Grace. You don't have to love the song. You just need to, to know how to put the chords together. You will take that concept, the way that I taught that song in the course, in the free course. You'll take that same exact concept and apply it to any song that you do, and you'll be rocking out, socks out, okay? Good, good. All right, this one's saying, Eric, are blues positions designed to be played only on the prescribed fret position two from a scale? Understand it's played on the eighth fret. Uh, no, climber, it, they can be played anywhere. So for instance, if I play the A blues uh, first position, and I wanted to play it in G, I'm gonna go down a whole step. Make sense? Okay, good, good. So they can be played anywhere. Uh, yeah. Mary Beth is asking, it is hammer-ons using the pinky that is my problem. When I do hammer-ons, should I do the same slow down to make sure I play on my pinky tip? Indeed, Mary Beth, it's, all, it's, it's just always about that. It really is. It's always about just slowing it down, slowing it down, slowing it down. And friends, I'm bopping over to, to Facebook and for whatever reason, I'm still not getting that feed, that, that um, chat feed, and I apologize. Our hands are tied sometimes. We can only do what we can do, what only the, the uh, internet gods will let us do. So if you wanna get your questions answered, you're on Facebook, if you're on Instagram, head over to YouTube and I'll get the questions answered there, and I apologize. Uh, if you just go to my my webpage or go to youtube.com slash your guitar stage, it'll be what's happening right now, okay? All right, all right. Great question. So here's a different opinion, 40, uh, 0.46 for strumming and, and above 0.6 for picking. So so John's using a little bit thinner picks. Everybody's different, you know? So it really depends on, on, on what's comfortable for you, as Mark has just said here as well. What is the difference between a minor pentatonic and minor harmonic scale? Easy Troy is saying a lot. Uh, minor pentatonic is this. Okay, that's A minor pentatonic. And harmonic minor is like... Uh, oh, let's see. Uh, Something like that. That's it. So I play it in different ways and I was just trying to do it in the same position as that pentatonic, but that's the sound difference. So basically, think about this, a pentatonic scale is the five note scale. We're only using five notes out of the minor scale or the, the major scale, however you want to look at it. And the harmonic minor scale is the minor scale with a raised seventh scale degree. So a regular minor scale is going to sound like this.
harmonic minor sounds like this. That's the raised seventh. The regular seventh sounds like this. The raised seventh sounds like this. sense so there's a so really it's just the seventh is um, the seventh yeah okay does the store ship internationally you'll have to check because it's not my store per se it's just um, it's basically like a virtual store so you might be buying something off of Amazon you might be buying something off of Guitar Center uh, it just depends so you'll have to you'll have to see if you drill down you can see if it will do that or not it depends on the store for sure. All right, great, great questions. I wrote down all the chords in each of the major keys, C, A, G, E, and D. Should I play and memorize each chord in every key? Is that useful? I wrote down all the keys in each of the major keys. Should I play and memorize each chord in every key? Yes, Rod, it's very, very useful. Um, I would start, here's the order to do these in, Rod, because uh, like, again, Life is so much of, you know, everybody has big uh, plans to do things, and then if they fail, well, then they didn't get to those things, right? So it's, it's good to dream big, uh, but it's important to stack it in such a way that even if you don't succeed 100% using Pareto's rule, you'll get a lot taken care of, okay? So if you had said, you know, can I, should I do this for the major keys, C sharp, A sharp, G sharp, you know, F sharp, D sharp, I'd have been like, really? You want to play in all sharp keys? But you said C, A, G, E, and D because those are like the major keys that everybody uses, right? So that's great. You're already thinking down this path, Rod. So, you know, what are the keys that everybody plays in? They play in G, they play in C, A, E, D, those basic open positions. And in order, that goes, it goes G, C, E, a and D. That was that's the order I would take it in. And then this way, if you only get up to up to C, well, you've got two of the main keys. Okay, so that's how I like to think. Okay. Oh, I love this. TVA is saying it's a continuum. Everybody learns at a different rate. Just keep going, and it will come. Indeed, one hundred percent. Yes, 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 yes. I say that all the time. Uh, we're on a continuum, and it gets it just gets better and better. Audrina, watch Eric's uh, videos on the beginner's guitar. He's got motivational videos that encourage you to keep going. Indeed, yeah. Which video is that? Uh, Lim, if you're talking about the one with um, Amazing Grace, it uh, says something about Amazing Grace where I'm teaching that song. It's in the beginner's section, okay? All right, good, good. If I'm using A minor pentatonic and I bend a note half step on the eighth fret, first string, then I'm bending to a note that's not in the scale, but that is perfectly legit and sounds good. Why is that? Okay, Rahan, depends if you're, you know, remember, we can bend a half step, we can bend any, any amount we want, a quarter step, a half step, a whole step, one and a half steps. So, you know, if I'm bending that eighth fret, I'm bending a whole step up because that's the note that's in the scale. Same thing with the next string down. If I'm bending up a half step, then it's gonna sound like this. That doesn't sound good to me. Those are whole step bends. So, you're probably, you're either bending up a whole step, Rahan, and you don't realize that you are, or you're bending up a half step, and what sounds good to you doesn't sound good to me. Uh, but it will, eventually you'll be like, that doesn't sound good. You when you start working with the scale more because it's, just, it's out of sight of the scale. So one of those two different things are happening. All right, good, I'm still looking for question marks. Okay, so make sure you're putting a question mark at the end of these, okay? Otherwise, um, there's too many comments for me to just read them all. 
Eric, uh, what can one do to stay motivated in practicing? My way is to stick to the same schedule every morn morning, just like teeth brushing. What is your advice for staying motivated in practicing? Andra, uh, beautiful question. So <clears throat> here's the deal. I created, and this just, the folks that are in the Unstoppable Guitar System know this already, uh, folks that are in the 365, because you can be in one. Uh, you can have just the 365 if you want or if you're in the Unstoppable Guitar System, you get both. But I just recently created this, this practice regimen, daily schedule, and you'll see people comment about it in here. Uh, it's literally a daily schedule. There's seven different practices over seven different days. So, we do, so it's a week of practice, and we do that 52 times, and it graduates 52 times in complexity, very, very slowly, okay? Uh, there are PDFs included, there's video, there's explanations, there's um, GPX, which are like Guitar Pro files, Guitar Pro files, so that you can use them in Guitar Pro and slow them down, speed them up, change the keys, all that stuff. And basically what that does is just keeps you on schedule. Okay, well Friday is finger picking, you know, and Monday is alternate picking, or whatever the days I have set up like that. And so every single day, you've gotta do something that you're coming to. And, uh, and in fact, I have emails that I send out for those that, are, that decide if they want that motivation, if they want that push, if they want that drive, if they want those words of wisdom that are gonna drive them to, to that next level, I have lots, lots to motivate you with. Okay, so I'm just gonna say that. I've got lots to motivate you with. If you wanna know more about that, again, 365, you can get in that today for $1. And in addition to that, the Unstoppable Guitar System. You get both of those for one buck for 30 days, okay? This is, I always think about this, like if someone has a, a, a Lexus or a, a oh, what's the car I want, a Tesla. And, uh, and uh, no, I, don't, I mean, I want one, but I'll, I probably won't buy one for $100,000. But nonetheless, if someone gives me one, that'd be great. And nonetheless, um, what was I going to tell you? If someone said, hey, Eric, here's the key to Tesla for a month, I'd be like, are you kidding me? So that's basically what you're getting, is you're getting a thousand lessons and like 600 jam tracks for a buck, okay? I'd pay a buck to drive around a Tesla for a month. What is a scale? Is a scale just a bunch of notes that sound good together? Essentially, yes. A scale is a bunch of notes that sound good together. Uh, they usually have some sort of pattern. The main scale pattern is the major scale pattern. Whole step, whole step, half, whole, 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 half. I teach this in detail in the free course and that will, you know, Guitar Player 203, that will give you a really good idea of what scales are and how we look at them. They're all based off of the major scale. 99% uh, of the scales out there are based off of the major scale, so the derivative of it. What's the difference between a bass guitar and electric guitar? Uh, bass guitar has four strings that are an octave lower, the bottom four strings of, of an electric guitar, but an octave lower. Uh, electric can be, this can be an electric guitar. Electric guitar is just one that you can plug into an amplifier. And you can do that with bass or electric. So there's not, they can be the same, they can be different. Kind of like saying red and, uh, if something's red and shiny. It can be both or it can not be either or it could be one. Okay, good, good questions. I'm looking into buying an amp for my acoustic electric Martin DR2. Any recommendations? Uh, Matthew, no, I don't have a good acoustic electric, uh, I don't have an amp recommendation. You wanna get a full range. You wanna get an acoustic amp, not uh, just straight up guitar amp because it'll sound terrible. Uh, and number one, I'd ask you why you want an amp for your acoustic because unless you have a super, super loud voice, I wouldn't worry about it because it's not going to sound as good as the guitar sits by itself, okay? Yeah. All right, great question. Eric, how much chords should I learn and is there a way or step process that names the chords? Isaac, yes, I'm giving that to you today, Isaac yourguitarsage.com slash 30. I'm giving you that course, okay? It's the top 30 lessons I teach all my students. I teach this in a step-by-step -step process, naming the chords. Today, we went over those nine chords, the nine essential chords. If you don't know those chords, you don't know the nine chords that are used most throughout all of history since the beginning of time, amen. 
okay? Those are the chords you need to know. Learn those first before you learn anything else and you'll, you'll be so sweet, okay? All right, uh, if you want more than that, check out the, 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 the big course, yourguitarstage.com slash one, and for that one dollar, you'll get to see everything, okay? For one month, or 30 days. That's close to a month, right? All right, good, good, good. All right, how you guys doing? What time is it? Should we keep going? 12.44, I tell you what, let's go 15 more minutes. I'm gonna pop over to Facebook and just see. No, nothing. It's like literally like a little spinning wheel. Thank you, Facebook, so pro. Um, okay, thank you, thank you, YouTube, for working. Okay, so if you want your questions answered, my friends, that's where to go. Go to YouTube and I'll answer them there, okay? Okay, hey Eric, can you demonstrate how you would approach soloing over key changes, chord changes? Do you visualize the different chord shapes inside the scales and target those notes? Evan is saying, Evan, I do different things. My default is this. I say, what key am I in? What is the vibe of the chord progression, right? So if I'm playing like a A minor, So this is A minor, F, C, D, or e, G. Now I know, because I've taken my own course, uh, is that this is in the key of A minor. And so a good scale to use would be the minor pentatonic, or the minor blues, or the minor. So I could go... play that chord progression or that scale over the top of that. So that would be my default that I just know works. It's like that's my, it's almost like, okay, here are the pieces that we could use to solo. And then from there, what I would do is I would try to try to get some ideas to what the chords are doing, either by watching the guitar player, if I'm sitting there live with somebody, or I would... Um, or use my ear to try to determine what chords they're playing. When I do that, then that helps me to outline the chords a little bit better as I'm playing. But, Evan, if you would really like to know uh, the bits and pieces uh, regarding this, you know, the minimalistic blues is one of them, okay? And I have uh, videos, I have a video or two on YouTube on that, but I have a whole series inside the $1, uh, the $1 special, okay? So I would either just use the scale in minimalistic blues, and then the other thing would be uh, what I call chasing the chord. I have a video for that on YouTube. I have a lot of stuff like that inside the Unstoppable Guitar System, but I have one video for that inside of um, inside of YouTube. You can check that out. Chasing the chord. And basically what I'm doing there is I'm saying, oh, okay, it's an A minor chord, so I'm gonna play some bits and pieces off of that A minor chord, uh, definitely the root. And uh, the root of each one of these chords, I'm def definitely going to play some part of that uh, or some other part of the chord. And that makes it sound more melodic, okay? All right, so here we go. Uh, I sometimes find that playing a chord variation, uh, example, a C sus2 instead of a C makes transitions easy when playing in the key of G. Thoughts? Yep, it will do that sometimes. Um, I don't know, I'm not sure what other thoughts you want me to give on that, but yeah, it will work like that sometimes. And if it sounds good, Jude, do it, you know, seriously. If it sounds good, it's like, you know, we're artists, we're painters with music. Uh, even if you don't think that you are, you are. If you can hum a note, if you can hum, if you can talk, you can sing, because when we talk, we're singing, we're just not holding the notes out. But when I'm talking, I'm definitely using notes. Folks may not believe this, but if I went longer with the notes and said, folks, don't believe this, then I'm using notes, okay? We're using notes all the time, which means you can sing. You may not sing like you think you can sing, but that's a matter of practice. Uh, and same thing with anything else. You don't believe me? That's okay. You can sit in your unbelief and never sing, or you can believe me because... I'm around musicians and singers and everything else since the beginning of time, and I know how it's done. That's how it's done. You practice it, you'll get to it. I promise, okay? When playing 
when I come around Green, Green Day, what's the best way to mix palm muting with strumming and getting the rhythm right? That's a lot of pieces all at once, Jen. Again, you're talking about palm muting, which I have videos for, strumming, which I have uh, videos for, um, and I don't have that song lesson yet, <laughs> but that would be, you know, like three different things that you're looking at. But the way to practice it, Jen, is to practice it, but slow it way down. You're looking for one thing that I can tell you, slow it way down. Do all that, the palm muting, the strumming, the getting the rhythm right, but slow it way down. Dumb slow, okay? Because whatever you practice, your brain is going to do. If you're practicing mistakes at any speed, you're gonna be getting great at mistakes. If you're practicing at any speed, the right thing, you're gonna get great at that, okay? And then you can slowly speed it up. Matthew, get a Fishman Loudbox uh, Mini. mini. Uh, you can get a used one, Guitar Center for 275. Nice, okay. Great, thank you for adding that, Byron. Okay, Eric, what's the difference between a five position major scale and seven position major scale? Uh, Gary, nothing really. It's just that you're sh deciding to shift your hand as opposed to not shifting your hand. So for instance, uh, if I'm playing scale forms one and s one, well, here's one. Here is seven, okay? I'm starting on the first finger. So I didn't have to move for that one. Um, if I'm playing the third, no, first, second, third, I could do this. I could play three positions right here. Watch this. So I didn't move. Here I go. I'm moving to the next position. I'm just moving a finger up. Now this last position, I could play with my pinky. Or I could play it like this. So here's the difference, I'm shifting now. So it's the same scale, I'm just playing it in a different position. That's why some folks will say, oh, it's five positions, and other people will say it's seven positions. Make sense? Uh, is Taylor Guitars a good brand? It is, it's a great brand. Do you think my uh, practice on low vo volume is hindering my performance sound? Yeah, typically when you when you lower an amp sound, it doesn't sound as good. But um, sometimes you gotta sometimes you gotta do that if you're playing late at night and stuff, you know. Yeah, uh, Brian. Okay, here you go, Brian. Saying I watched the chord visualization or watched the chord visualization section in UGS, uh, the National Number System and how to use a capo. I learned more from watching those than anything I've ever studied. Yes, Brian, thank you so much for letting me know that. And folks, all three of those things that Brian's talking about right now are literally available to you for the next 30 days, or what I should say is, is available for one buck, and it's available to you for 30 days. You're getting the entire course, you're getting all this stuff, every single thing I've talked about today in video format is available inside Unstoppable Guitar System and you get 365 to boot for $1. Uh, to get that, just go to yourguitarsage.com slash one, okay? Uh, I've heard that Tesla will be out of business soon. I've heard that, I've heard, th I hear things. I wonder why, probably because they're selling $100,000 cars, uh, okay? What amp could I get that has has multiple out multiple inputs? I'd like to sing with a mic. Reverb would be sweet as well. Any ideas to have a okay? What you want, Matthew, is you want a mixer, and you want some monitors. So go down to your local guitar center or call Sweetwater Music, and they'll walk you through it and tell them exactly what you're trying to do. They'll get you set up. Okay, uh, you want a mixer and powered monitors. That'll get you there, and you can do that for pretty cheap probably as low as a real budget, you probably could get in for about 300 bucks. That's the l really low. But it would work great, you know? 
Uh, okay. Do you have any advice for people who are performing solo in public for the first time? David. Yes. I have a whole section uh, for, for playing live inside the program that I'm giving you guys for a buck today. Okay, yourguitarsage.com slash one. I have a whole section of this. So I'll tell you a few things though, David. If, you know, if you want more advice, you can check that out. Otherwise, you know, for playing live, just remember this. You're gonna be scared, chances are. You're going to mess up, chances are. Chances are no one's gonna die because you messed up. No one really, no one wants you to mess up. No one's making fun of you if they mess up. If they are, they're a tool and they shouldn't even be in there and they're an idiot, so just ignore them. Uh, but bottom line, most people want you to do well and it's not rocket science. It's not brain surgery. We're not gonna break anything if we mess up, okay? But what it is, it's very humbling because it shows you the musician who you are. Sometimes it makes you even seem worse because you get all embarrassed and that sort of thing. So it really is a, a come, what we call a come to Jesus. It makes you go, I got to get back to practice and I've really got to do something well here, you know. So um, that's what I would say. Uh, make sure you just practice your parts as well as you can right before you get on stage. Uh, you know, I, I like to typically, I mean, I'll, I'll literally, you know, do a little meditation, maybe say a little prayer and just be like, you know, I've practiced and, you know, the rest is, is up to you, the universe, me, whatever, just like, I'm letting it go. I just let it go and I'm just like, get up on stage and do my thing. Doesn't mean I don't mess up, but it's a lot better than going, oh, I got to make it perfect. And if I mess up, oh, what's going to happen? Don't do that. Then you'll, you'll just, uh, you'll short yourself out. You don't want to do that. But David, more information about that inside the program. Here's the deal. For those of you that are in UGS already, if you want to know about that, in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see a little search engine. Right there, you want to type live, L-I-V-E. And David, um, same thing. Uh, if you get in there today, when you get in there today for a buck, do that um, upper left hand corner type live uh, on YouTube. I probably have some videos you could type in your guitar stage live, but obviously the best stuff is in the course. You know, do you teach altern? Do you teach using alternative chords? And can you demonstrate, Anthony? I've never heard of alternative chords. I've never heard that in my life. So you probably mean something different than alternative chords because I don't know what 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 is that what that what that would mean. Do you mean inversions? If, inver if you're talking about inversions, I teach inversions, which is basically like if you have C chord, instead of the C chord, you could play a C slash G or a C slash E. You know, I teach those. Yes, but if you drill down, let me know if that's what you mean. When playing, okay, we talked about that one. What's a good distortion to play Lincoln Park type songs? A tube distortion, something really heavy. OCD is a good one. OCD distortion is, is great. Crank it all the way up. And also, um, I have another one. I mean, a lot of them you can, if you, do, if you just crank them, you're going to get that, that Linkin Park type sound, you know, that heavy sound. Okay, we've got about three more minutes here, my friends. Um, in fact, let's do this. Let me tell you about a few things before we go. I wish I could have gotten to all these questions. There's so many questions all the time, folks, and I always feel bad that I can't get to them all. But this is why. Look, after some time, after being on YouTube since 2007, you get a few followers. And when you get a few followers, then people want to ask you questions. And I love that. I love my job and I love doing this. I love taking this time to do it. That's why, that's why we do it, right? Because um, it's helping folks out. But it's very difficult to get all your questions answered in these broadcasts where there's so many people because there's so many people. Inside of the Unstoppable Guitar System, we do live broadcasts. In fact, we just bumped it up to two a month now that we're doing that are just for our inner sanctum folks, just for folks that are inside UGS. We're doing the next two are going to be this Monday. So there's going to be one at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time and one at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. I want you in on those, okay? And you literally can get in for a buck. You can get into both of them and get those other thousand videos plus the jam tracks, plus the motivational um, emails and everything else. 
Now, I know a lot of you out there don't have a dollar and you're like, I don't have a dollar, this is some sort of trick. And for those folks, I'm saying, I still, even though you don't believe me, even though I've been doing this for over 30 years, and if I was in the, in the, in the habit of cheating people, I wouldn't be around anymore. I've been doing this a long time. So for those folks that still don't believe me, at least take advantage of my free program, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. Why, Eric? Why are we doing that? Because every question, 99% of the questions that are answered at this broadcast and every other broadcast that I've ever done can always be answered from that first 30 lessons video set that I'm giving you for free. YourGuitarStage.com slash 30. The link's in the description of this video. And the reason that I give that out for free is the same reason that I started YouTube, which was I ended up teaching the same Taylor Swift 10 times in a week and then the same Keith Urban song 10 times in a week and then the same uh, Avicii tune 10 times in a week. And what I said was, why don't I just make a video upload it to this crazy thing called YouTube, even though no one's on there, and maybe someone across the world will pull up the video and learn the song, and yay, that'll be great. I can help somebody out. And that's why I originally did it. Had no intentions on making courses and writing books and everything. I was working a normal nine to five job. I still was teaching, you know, in the evenings and that sort of thing, but I was just just a dude, you know, and then eventually I said, I like teaching guitar way more than I do anything else. And that's when I started writing the books and creating the courses and everything else. But with all that being said, I created that top 30 lessons course for folks like you because I knew that I would not, I knew that this, even though I could reach hundreds and thousands of people at a time on, on this sort of format, right? We've never been able to do that before the internet. I had to meet with people one-on-one, one-on-one, on one-on-one. On one. And that was great, but it's very time consuming. Even when we're in this sort of format, someone asks a question and everybody else is like, oh, I hope he didn't answer it, we're gonna be here forever. And that's why I have to refer you to this free program because it's there to help you and I literally have created it for you. So why not take advantage of it, right? Uh, last thing, my friends, well, a few other things. Share this video for a chance to win a lifetime membership to both the Unstoppable Guitar System and 365 Guitar Plan because this is what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be giving these away often at these live events. I don't know if we're going to be doing it every time, but we're doing it today. So uh, share on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, wherever they allow you to share things, and we'll be looking after the broadcast and we'll be doing one announcement or giving one one lifetime membership away, which is $400 value. Um, other things that are coming up on the 25th of this month, I'm going to be doing a huge broadcast. I'm going to be giving away a very, very yummy guitar. I won't tell you what the name of the guitar is, but I can tell you that it rhymes with Pest Law. Okay, it rhymes with Pest Law. Um, and the name of the brand of that guitar rhymes with Vibson, Vibson Pest Law. Okay, if you know what it is, then great. But I'm going to be giving away one of those on the 25th of this month. We're going to be doing big live broadcasts. We're going to be giving away thousands of dollars worth of goodies, uh, an amp. I think we're giving away an amp, uh, pedals, just a slew of stuff and a slew of courses. Why? Because I love giving stuff away and it's just a blast. So make sure you mark your calendar for that. We're, we'll be making announcements for that soon. In fact, today I'm going to go down to Groon and buy that guitar. And uh, and it's been used by a famous player. So uh, there's it's going to be fun. We're gonna. Uh, I can't tell you everything yet because i got to have the guitar in my hands to know that I have it. Um, we do live broadcasts all the time. In fact, we're going to be trying to do them every Wednesday and Thursday, except for the times when I cannot do it. But we're really shooting for every Wednesday and Thursday, so mark your calendar. If you haven't obviously subscribed and all that good stuff, do that. Please let me know how I can help you. I'm here for you. I don't know what else I can do. When I get done with these broadcasts, I feel like I'm going to collapse because I, I, I'm trying to give everything to you, and I don't... I'm, I don't know how I can get better at it, but I will. I promise you I will. I want to give you more. Please let me know how I can help, friends. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for taking the time today. Great questions. Um, hit the link that's in the description of this video uh, for either the free course or you can do, instead of slash 30, do slash 1. And for that $1 special where you get the whole enchilada for 30 days. All right, my friends, I'm out of here. See ya.